Hello again everyone, and today it seems very meet and right to review and compare the new, updated version of one of Canon's most popular and useful lenses. It's the new EF 24-105mm f4 IS USM L Mark II, a general purpose zoom lens for full frame or APS-C digital SLR cameras, or mirrorless cameras if you use an adapter. The original lens was released 12 years ago now, but it's still a very solid performer. My wife and I have used our copy a lot, and we've always been very satisfied with its sharpness and versatility and usefulness for video making, although I do wish it were a bit smaller and lighter. And at £600, or as little as $700, US dollars, it's good value, especially for one of Canon's L lenses. Well, the new version of the lens is bigger and heavier, and at £1,000, or a little over US dollars it's a lot more expensive. It had better be good, although really, I'm not sure how much sharper Canon could realistically make a lens with this kind of zoom range. Anyway, on to the lens in question. It's made of good quality plastics and based on a metal lens mount with weather sealing. As I mentioned, annoyingly, its design is even bigger and heavier than its predecessor, making it really pretty bulky and heavy, although both lenses share the same 77mm filter thread. I did not enjoy walking up and down hills with this thing on my camera while getting sample pictures. Maybe I should just get in shape a bit more though. The zoom ring is wider than its forerunner, but a little stiffer than the older lens. Hopefully it will get smoother after use. On the other hand, the new lens's focus ring works incredibly smoothly, being really well damped and of course, featuring full-time manual focus. Here's the autofocus working on both lenses. The speed, accuracy and quietness of both lenses autofocus is about the same. An important feature of both lenses is image stabilisation. Here's some footage with the old version of the lens without stabilisation and now with IS turned on. As you can see it's doing a nice job and as you can hear it's a bit noisy. Here's the new lens now, without stabilisation, and now turned on. The first thing you notice is that it's silent, which is great news. I'd say it's also just a tiny bit steadier than the previous lens, although really, there's very little difference. The lens comes with front and rear caps, and a hood, and a soft pouch. Overall, there really isn't much improvement over the old lens in terms of build quality, the image stabilisation is a little improved, but the extra size and weight are a pain. Let's see about image quality now on a full frame camera, my trusty old 20 megapixel Canon 6D. I need to upgrade that camera, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Anyway, for these tests I've turned off all the in-camera corrections. In terms of sharpness, the two lenses seem to play a cat and mouse game. I found the original lens to be a bit sharper at 24mm from f4, and even when stopped down to f8. Chromatic aberration levels are about the same. At 50mm, the original lens is a little sharper in the middle at f4, however the new lens is considerably sharper in the corners. As you stop down, the new lens's advantage stands firm. At 105mm, both lenses are a little softer than they were at wider angles, but the new lens has a slight advantage in the middle, and also slightly better contrast. Also, the new lens has a tiny advantage in the corners. Stop both lenses down a bit for slightly better corners, and noticeably more sharpness in the middle. Overall, the differences between the lenses really are slight, and probably affected by sample variation and human error on my part. But taking the whole zoom range into consideration, the new lens seems to be a very slight improvement, although my copy of the older lens was sharper at wide angles. 
Well, let's see how the lenses perform on APS-C, in this case on my 24 megapixel Canon EOS M3 camera. It's a similar story, except magnified by the tighter APS-C sensor. The original lens I found to be slightly sharper at 24mm in the middle and in the corners. Stop the lenses down for a bit more sharpness, but the older lens continues to be sharper. At 50mm the old lens is a bit sharper in the middle of the image, but over in the corners the new lens has a small advantage. There's only a tiny increase in sharpness when stopping down the lens's aperture. And at 105mm it's the same story. The old lens is a touch sharper in the middle of your images, but the new lens is definitely sharper in the corners. Chromatic aberration is comparable. At f5.6 both lenses are sharper, but at f8 the new lens has a clear advantage. So on APS-C it also swings and roundabouts between the two optics. Neither lens is looking very sharp, but a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor poses a serious challenge to any camera lens. Still, I'm disappointed that the new lens couldn't offer more improvement. Let's see how both lenses handle vignetting and distortion when used on a full frame camera. At 24mm and f4 the corners are rather dark. The new lens seems to have slightly brighter corners though. Stopping down to f5.6 or f8 is helpful but not fully effective in getting rid of it, you'll need to use peripheral illumination. Both lenses show strong barrel distortion here, although I think the newer lens is a slight improvement. Zoom in to 50mm and that distortion flips to pincushion. Now I think it looks very slightly worse on the newer lens. At 105mm both lenses perform about the same, so no remarkable differences here. Ok, let's move on to close up image quality. The new lens can focus about 4cm closer than the old one, but its close up image quality is noticeably softer. Both lenses sharpness improve when stopped down to f5.6, although the older lens still has a slight advantage. Let's see about flaring. At wider angles the new lens shows a touch less flaring than the old, in fact it's putting in a very good performance here. If you zoom in then the new lens's advantage is stronger, as you might be able to see here. And finally bokeh. I'm really pleased with the quality of the new lenses out of focus backgrounds, they're always nice and smooth. Here's a comparison with the old lens. I think Canon have effected a very slight improvement over the old version here. Slight improvement. I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over saying that because it really is the story of this new lens. Where there are improvements they are indeed very slight, which is a surprise because Canon don't normally upgrade their lenses unless they've managed a few serious changes. The 24-105mm f4 ISUSM L Mark II doesn't really bring anything new to the table, and it's bigger, heavier and more expensive than the previous version. The only really noticeable improvement is quieter image stabilization and slightly improved vignetting. All the other changes are just marginal, except for the price increase of course. I think this new lens is simply another example of Canon failing to offer good value for money in its higher end line of optics. My advice is to grab a new copy of the older 24-105mm lens while they're still around, you'll be just as happy.